Today we've got a really special treat for you. We're here with Sazen Nadawa, and we're going to be doing something that I absolutely love. We're cooking in the bush. Uh, we're at Sazen's home. Thank you very much for the invitation. Welcome. Tell us what we're doing today. Okay, so today we're going to make a venison stew a la outdoor. A la outdoors. A la outdoors. I like a la outdoors. And we have our um, root vegetables here. Okay. We have our deer meat right here. Mm -hmm. Very simple. And also we have uh, two special little ingredients Ooh. forged from uh, today. You, you went out and picked that right back there. Right behind my backyard, like right here. And you took it home and you gave it some absolute love. And did you pickle these? Yes. So, so they're gonna be slightly pickled. Slightly. Oh, I caught that. Did you see that? <laughs> my, my arm is trained. It doesn't want you to eat it. <laughs> mm. Mm -hmm. Big crunch. Give me one of those. Oh yeah, absolutely. Delicious, fresh, I love it. Fragrant. So that came from your land and... This special guy right here, oh. maple syrup, forged, produced, tapped from the trees around here. This is maple syrup. I got, Boiled I, right here. I can't lie. Uh, when I first got here, Sazen knows my love for maple syrup. And she goes, do you want to do a morning shot? <laughs> we did a morning shot of maple syrup. I'm telling you, I've had maple syrup around the world. Um, and this is, it's got a body to it and a flavor that is, it's purely you. You know, when I taste your food, it's always rich and delicious and full of flavor. And it's exemplified by this little bottle of golden nectar. So I'm looking forward to seeing how you use this in this. Awesome. So well, let's get into it. Let's get started. Yeah. So I'm going to start off by heating some butter. Okay. I'm going to grab that because yep. we're going to bring that over. Yep. So we've heated up our cast iron. Sure. We need it nice and hot. Yep. Give me a second. Ooh, she's perfectly nice and hot. So we just want to melt our butter. Okay. You can use any kind of fats you wish. You can use olive oil. You can use um, vegetable oil, canola oil, any kind of oil. I like to use butter. Oh, she's, butter is beautiful. It's it, it, beautiful. It, it, it tastes great. Yep. Uh, there's nothing like the, the, the taste of really great butter. Yep. Do you make your own butter here too, Sasson? No. <laughs> yes, I do with my cows. There we go. In the they're, bush. They're in the bush. Bush cows. <laughs> bush cows. Bush cows. So here we've uh, melted our fat, so you can see it's starting to turn a little brown. Yep. We can throw in our meat now. Okay. So this, that's the sound that you want to hear. That sizzle, that, 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 that instant bang. Sizzle. Yeah. So here we go. And while my meat's browning, mm -hmm. I'm going to throw in some of that wild garlic that we picked. Okay. So hand me over the wild garlic. Yes, ma'am. There you go, chef. Thank you. I'm gonna leave these whole. Right. Just because, you know. It's nice, you get a nice big, you know, crunch of something. Yes. Uh, and, and also when you're eating it, you like to see what you're eating. Exactly. Like you know that's gonna be wild garlic. Heck yeah. Absolutely, you, you went through all that trouble of, of going out to the bush, I'm sure 30 paces that way, and picking all this up, so you know. I don't wanna start chopping it up, unless it's for like a fine cuisine, then I'll. Cut Make it, it a little, little pretty, pretty. But this is very rustic. This is home style cooking. Mm -hmm. This is what you were you were raised with. This yeah. is what you do. Big and chunks. Absolutely. This this is this is just chunky boom. like me. Giddy up makes two of us. <laughs> the chunky stew. It's all good. So awesome. we're gonna so we're gonna brown up the meat. Yes. And that'll take you know five ten minutes. Yep. And uh, what else is gonna be going in this aside from the meat and the root vegetables? I see this this pot right here and this has got me a little intrigued you're going to be intrigued for a little bit longer okay i'll just leave that you're there for not a bit. you're not sharing anything until it's time eh? no just like a classic chef a little bit so again the I'm salt, gonna the salt, salt pepper. season it yep and you can add salt to your taste okay you can add no salt right you can add a lot of salt yep but Personal preference. Personal preference. I notice that your salt is pink. Himalayan salt. There you go. So yeah. you're, you're adding another element 
mm -hmm. to your food. So you're using not just regular table salt, no. but you're using a really nice pink Himalayan salt. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, it's a nice color, Absolutely. it's a nice flavor, yeah. Yeah. and it's healthier than the iodized salt. Agreed. I don't use it personally. No? I use, I use um, whenever I go out east or out west, I get sea salt. Mm -hmm. And you can go to any fishmonger. Actually, we went to Newfoundland uh, last year, and we ended up at a, a wonderful fish store right by the ocean, and they had no fish. But my buddy Don said, take a look at this. And it was just a big box full of sea salt. Now you go to the high end store, they're gonna charge you $8 for something like this. And they had them all wrapped up in little baggies for 50 cents. Mm -hmm. I bought everything. Awesome. So now I, I came <laughs> home, I smoked some salt and I understand why I use iodized salt. Yep. When you've got something so much better. Exactly. It's all about the ingredients that you put into your food. Yep. And beauty. Beauty. Yep. Absolutely. So here we have fresh cracked peppercorns as well. Yep. So that's what we're going to add. Nice. And again, it's to your preference. Perfect. If you want more, but uh, if you want more pepper, yep. you add more pepper, yep. less that, pepper. That's what cooking is. It's all yeah. a matter of personal preference and the meat isn't taking long to brown up at all. No, not at all. You know, cast iron, open wood fire. It doesn't get any better than this. In my opinion, this is the epitome. You know, when you go camping and stuff, this is always fun. But when you get the the surroundings that you have and mm -hmm. living up here and you get to just go out your front door build a fire and cook mm -hmm. brilliant real I simple it. i love it and you don't want your fire to be super hot either because if it's super crazy hot then it's just gonna like and you can't yourself. get near the fire to yeah. actually do your cooking so yeah a nice controlled flame yeah all right so you're you're browning the meat nicely yes and obviously this is going to need more than wild garlic and meat so what do you want me to get for you the basket of the Ooh. diced root vegetables please what a beautiful basket ah thank you i love this it's for the show it is for the show look at this <laughs> hey isn't that nice awesome. all right so, so i am going to put in some celery here all right and usually i do these in stages but today because um you know it's a little hot out here sure um, we're just going to add everything. We have beans here. We have parsnips, potatoes, turnips, all of the beautiful root vegetables. And you can add any kind of vegetables you wish. Okay. It doesn't have to be these kinds of vegetables. Right. Okay. And you cut the vegetables the size that you want as well. It could be like really small. It could be like super chunky. Yeah. You know, like I like it chunky. So essentially, the, the larger the piece of vegetable, the longer you're going to have to cook it. Yes. So that it, it breaks down. If you've got very small pieces, it's going to go very quickly. But if you've got large pieces, you're talking maybe an hour yes. to actually cook this. Mm -hmm. Right. So extend your time. The larger the piece, yeah. the more time you're going to give it. Also, the type of meat. If you're using a more tender meat, then right. it'll be um, longer to cook. If it's, what did I say? Tender. If it's tender. So Less, less time. time yes that's what i mean right so if you're using the neck or the shoulder yeah. of the animal then you're going to braise it a whole lot, lot longer, longer so yes. that it breaks down all those connective tissues my mind was saying that uh, that's okay like i am your speaker because i'm actually reading what you want to say <laughs> exactly. i'm just saying it for you yes thank you oh you're very welcome so here we go okay we've coated all the juices uh, we've coated the vegetables with all the juices that were at the bottom right so now what yep. we're going to do is we're going to take this mystery liquid right or you could just pour it right do you want me to pour it in yes please okay including the floaties nope go ahead so what we're pouring here the mystery is just black tea oh instead of using um you know meat um what do you call a beef broth right oops there oh, we go we got a tea bag in yeah That'll happen. So. Awesome. We got enough in there. Yeah, I, I would pour a little bit more. A little bit more? Yeah. All right. Watch your hands. There you go. Might as well use it all yeah, way. Yeah, may as well. Yeah. There you go. Perfect. So, yeah, the reason why I use a lot of black tea in my cooking is because it's, um, it's uh, something that was really close to my grandmother's stove and it right. was reachable so you know like why not instead of getting like a water that's kind of like out of the way use flavor yeah plus it's flavorful absolutely you, you, if if you're going to use water that's fine yes you it's can fine. use it you can use water but you know what if you've got something that's flavorful to add 
You know, sometimes you yeah. don't have chicken stock. Sometimes you don't have beef stock nope. or, or caribou stock or beef or whatever. Yeah. Tea. Why not? Love it. Yes. I never even thought of using black tea. Again, another sesame trick. <laughs> but you know what? That's why you guys bought the, the package, you know, is to learn how this wonderful chef makes this stew. And now you know it. Little tricks also, means a lot. I'm just going to add a little bit of the vinegar just to give it a little, you know, yeah. add a little bit more flavor. For sure. And now the ultimate secret ingredient I add to everything. Yes, I add love, but I also add, you know it. Maple syrup. You know it. Say when. When. And I find that brings everything together. A little sweetness. So you got a little vinegar added. Mm -hmm. So you've got that acidity in there. Yep. You've got the sweetness of the maple syrup. Mm -hmm. You have that the earth tones of the meat and the vegetables. And you've got that wicked whack of black tea. A little bit. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to trying this. You're forgetting it's another done. ingredient that's going into this without even knowing it. What do you do? Love. That, but this is a little test. What else is going in here? What's getting in our eyes? Oh, smoke, obviously. The smoky flavor. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. That's Absolutely. What's going uh, in it's there. a big dynamic. Yeah. Anytime that you cook over wood, charcoal, you produce flame. Flame equals smoke, smoke Oops. equals flavor. And uh, that's what I'm all about. Yeah. And apparently, you know, people have been doing this a whole lot longer than I have. Mm -hmm. And to actually do it, you know, the, 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 the original way, you know, build a fire, get some root vegetables, uh, go slaughter an animal, butcher it out and <laughs> make yourself a really good stew. I'm listening, but I know, I know it's, smoke. Uh, you know what? I, th I think it's your grandmother just touching you right now going, you're using my idea. So I'm going to throw some smoke in your eyes, especially in your eye. Absolutely. It's all about love. Okay. I'm walking out of the frame. All right. <laughs> well, she's walking out of the frame. We're going to let this cook for a whole lot longer. We're going to come back when it finishes cooking and show you what the final dish looks like. Stick around. What a treat we have for you. I love bread. Bread is one of my favorite things on earth and we're gonna do something very special. Yes. What are we doing, Susan? So um, with this too, I usually like to dip some bread, a little butter on the bread and the uh, bread that we're gonna make today is bannock. Bannock. Yes. Traditional bread. Um, it's an adapted mm. culture. This is a, Sp uh, not a Spanish, it's a Scottish bread that was adapted into our culture oh. i would just like to clarify no that. no no. i'm glad because this is what it's all about mm -hmm. is learning when yes. we were in your house you were teaching me so much and that's what i love working about the festival is you get to learn so much yes. and i'm corrected all the time and that's mm -hmm. a good thing because ignorance there's no there's no excuse for it mm -hmm. you can't be ignorant of something so learn about it yep. so education education is, is key. key is key so yes We've adapted, we've adopted it, and um, you know, so we made it. We made it our own. Cool. And it's part of who we are as well now. Yep. Um, so bannock. Right. I grew up on it. Yep. And a lot of it was cooked on open fire, along with the stew or Very anything cool. that was cooked open fire. Boom. Yep. Right there. Really simple. The simplest bannock that. I can do because I'm really horrible at kneading. Okay. The bannock because yep. then it comes out like. Rough. Concrete. Yes, concrete. Yeah, very hard. Yep. So, yep. ingredient. Flour. Easy. What about kind of flour? All-purpose flour? All-purpose flour. Okay. Simple. Gotcha. About four cups wow. right here. Okay. And then right here we have baking powder. Okay. It's about a tablespoon and a half. Okay. Just to show you guys. Right. That. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe a little bit more. So nah, nice, uh, a little bit more. Whatever. Nice and fluffy. Yes. Make it know? nice and fluffy. Because that's what's going to basically make that... that that, that bread puff up. Yes. Great. So again. Pink Himalayan salt. Yes. Okay. You can add again to your preference. Right. Um, if you like a saltier bread, by all means. So about a tablespoon. Yes. Okay. Add more salt or no salt at all. Gotcha. Give that a quick stir. So if somebody's on dietary restrictions, they don't necessarily have to put salt in this bread. No, you Perfect. don't. Yeah. But if you want to add flavor. Pepper. You can add some pepper. Gotcha. And while you're doing that, yes, I need to put some um, butter on this pan so it doesn't stick. Yes. So essentially, a little paper towel, That's some really good is. butter. Yes. Now, do you use salted butter or unsalted butter? Uh, I like salted butter. Yep. Yep. Okay. 
I so would add a lot more, actually. A lot more? Yes. Okay. Don't be, don't right. cheap out on me. No, be no, 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 no. This, this is the learning <laughs> process. So really goop yeah. it on there. Goop make, it on. Make it thick. Make it, make it show. You know, you yeah. want to see that butter. And uh, there you go. And it also, the reason why we goop it on is because it gives it such a nice crunch. Like when you get your bannock, when you take it out, bannock. especially. Yeah. Oh, it's just yeah. beautiful. Absolutely. So Textural qualities going. are very important. Yes. Okay. So we've got our pan all lubed up with, with, with butter. And of course, we're going to need some liquid to that. Yes. And so lukewarm water. Okay. Right here. Right. And you know what? I don't measure. It's all about feel. It's always feel the okay. look. Right. Okay, make a little well, add your water mm -hmm. gradually, stir right. as you go. You don't want to go nuts. You don't want to go nuts. You're already nuts enough. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So just kind of gently stir. Until it comes together. Yeah, as you can see, we need a little bit more water. Thank right. you for holding it. You're very welcome. It's teamwork. Yes, And yes. it's fun. Oh, yes. You know, we're, we're outside, we're making bread. Seriously, totally, it's yes. kind of cool, eh? Yep. So here we go. See how uh, the liquid is starting to absorb all the dry? Right. This is what we want. We don't want to add too much. Okay. And I know some people, they add like fat to this. This is, uh, you know, as simple as I, I get. Okay. And if you want to add flavorings to this, yeah. you know, if you want to get all shishi lala, you could probably add chopped chives. You could. And you can, you can make it yours. But right now we're doing... Uh, simple. simple. Yeah, very simple, basic. Gotcha. And instead of adding water as well, you could even add black tea. Black tea. Yeah. But I was going to say, if you want to go like crazy, mm -hmm. you add some fresh herbs to this. You're talking chives. Yeah. You can add chopped wild garlic in here mm. and then add beer instead of water. Giddy up. Holy cow. Giddy up. Game changer. Absolutely. Yes. Nice. So here we go. Right. This is the texture that we're looking for. See okay. how it's kind so of fluffy. So it just came together, a little fluffy. Yeah. It's not dry anymore and it's no. definitely not wet. No. Um, and it's not sticking to the bowl. Nope. Well, a little bit. A little bit. A little bit. Well, obviously, it, yeah. you know, it's, it's dough. And you don't want to over mix it. This is as much mixing as you want to do. It'll just get too tough otherwise. Yes. Okay. So right here, let's pour it into this beautiful cast iron that's mm -hmm. been beautifully buttered. Right. So there you go. You just kind of spread it out. Right. Evenly. And that's it. And Perfect. if you want to go a little bit more fancier. Mm -hmm. Ooh, there a little bit go. of pepper on top. More pepper. Beautiful. I love pepper. There All right. you go. And that's it. That's it. So she goes right onto the fire. She goes right onto the fire. Now, 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 fire can be a tricky thing. So how are you going to cook this bread without actually burning the bottom? I think that's really important to mention on how you're going to do that. You're going to have to move it around a lot. So, so you're turning to turning. Now, I also see you're using half indirect mm -hmm. and half direct. Yes. So you're getting a little bit more heat on one side and that's why you're turning the pan yes. is to regulate the amount of fire that touches the bottom of the pan. Mm -hmm. That needs a bit more attention than the stew does. The stew, you can leave it now. Of course, it's a liquid. It's yes. just going to do its thing. Mm -hmm. But the bread, that needs some love. Yeah. Everything needs love, but that really needs special attention. Yeah. Okay. So there you go. So anyways, we're going to, uh, we're going to finish off doing the bannock. We're going to let that stew roll and do its thing. And uh, we'll be back to check out on some really awesome food. Miigwech, everyone. So we're here today. We're going to forge the ingredient that we're going to use for um, our stew. This is wild garlic, also known as ramps. Um, we're going to use the bulb as well as the green because my recipe, I think I calls for kale, but I couldn't find any kale in my local grocery store. So we're going to use wild garlic leaves. So um, wild garlic is usually, um, it starts, the, the season starts at the end of May. And what you want to do is you want to pick the ones that have the thicker roots and you don't pick all of it. You want to leave some here like a, you maybe you want to pick like maybe um 50 percent you know 60 depending the amount like here i'm not going to pick everything because i like to leave a little bit left and you want to snap off the bulb and leave the roots in there so here we go we're just going to dig out a bulb it takes a while it's you know <clears throat> you need patience for it and you don't want to just dig everything out you kind of want to go one bulb at a time
This one's pretty deep. Oh, there we go. So if you're not afraid of worms or any kind of bugs, you know, she's a beauty. So here we go. This is the wild garlic. Beautiful. So we're just going to dig out a couple so we can throw it in our stew. Here I go, one. So snapping it off, making sure we don't have no roots. One root, it's fine. It happens. Just put it back in there. So here you go. There's some spots that you can find it's easier to pick, like this spot. Actually, the earth is a little harder, so you have to really, really get in there. Sometimes it's super deep. It's not easy. Forging, it's fun. It connects you with the land, but it's also very satisfying. It's fresh. You know, it's earthy, it's healthy, except nowadays when I, I eat too much of this stuff, it gives me heartburn, not gonna lie. So sometimes you get, you know, a half bulb. So you wanna go in there and get that half bulb. Darn it. There's a half bulb not leaving anything there you go well this is really cool awesome we've been tending the fires and watching the stew do or the the stew do its thing but most importantly i watched you turn that bannock yep turning it and making sure that the the, the heat was even and what else are you going to do with this thing? So, um, also, we did the forging of the wild garlic. That was very cool. But yes. you know what? I had to stay by the fire. Oh, yeah. You had to watch the fire. I bandit. had to watch the fire because it'd be irresponsible to be out in the bush and let your fire go unattended. Yes. And you did a great job on the bannock. Well, Look thank you very much. the evenness of it. I'm impressed. Well, you told me what to do, and I tried to do it as best as I could. There you go. So, let's get into it. Let's check out the uh, stew, yeah. see how well she did. Ooh, wow. Look at the color of that the beauty it's really really lovely yeah everything is just amazing so are we ready for a bowl i think so let me get a bowl it hooks me up i'm hooking ladle thank you you're welcome here let me get some meat in here mm -hmm. oh yeah look at the color of that broth at mm. this point, if you want, you can add um, flour to it to thicken it up or tomato paste, but I like it natural. Should we get another one for you? Yes, please. Because I'm Come actually going to eat all of this. Yeah. Don't leave me hanging. Wow. Simple. Very nice. There you go. Delish. Just gonna put, no, I won't put that there. And the bannock? Yes, I'll... Oh. Uh, I'll get that. You want me to move that where? I'll show you. Actually, okay. I'll grab it because yep. I have these awesome Oh, gloves. look at you. Oh, cool. So there we go. You flipped it over done. and over. Done. This is how you test it. Actually, it's hollow. So just like you would with a, with a, with a bread. Yeah. You, you want that hollow sound. Yep. Fabulous. There you go. All right. Let's so cut her up. Let's cut her up and, and, and see what you do with this. God, I hope it turned out. Oh, I'm sure it's going to be beautiful. I'm just going to throw that there for a second. Alrighty, so usually we let this cool, but because of TV's sake. Oh, yeah. There you go. Oh, what look at that. That's gorgeous. Beautiful. Lovely. So, mm -hmm. this is what we usually do. Okay. Give me some butter. Got some butter. Mm. A little bit of butter. Mm -hmm. Which are bread of course there you go fabulous some stew some stew if 
you want to add extra salt. No. Well, we're going to taste it first to make sure. Yep. Mm. I'm going to put mine just right here because it's pretty hot. i got to try this. Yep. I'm going to taste the broth first. That is really, really good. Mm -hmm. and, and the nice thing about it is the vegetables aren't mushy. Nope. And your and the meat is tender. <gasps> yes. Mm. Uh, and it's simple. You just leave, leave everything simmer on its own. Okay. I and got, it blends in. Sorry, but I gotta try the bag. Okay, too. go ahead. Mm -hmm. This is what you do. Mm. 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 Oh. Oh. <laughs> mm. That is ridiculously good. That crunch of the bottom, it's fantastic. I can't wait till all of you make this at home. Susan, thank you so much for bringing us to your home and sharing some dishes that you've been cooking for years. Mm -hmm. it's, it's seriously delicious. Um, as a chef, I love the opportunity to learn and you gave us all that opportunity today. Well, thanks for having me. Thank you. Miigwech. Miigwech.